do you know that in Russian vocabulary the word ambitious has only negative connotations? Somehow, millions of people were made to believe and they still believe that wanting more is always bad and climbing a career ladder is a negative characteristic of a person. This is the Soviet heritage. We all know what American dream is. I can easily describe you a Ukrainian dream. Today it is a victory. And what is a Russian dream? I don't want to imagine. Of course, in Soviet Union there were people who wanted to build a career and even managed to do so. But the ideal pop culture image of a Soviet man was of a person, simple, to some extent a little bit primitive and naive, a person that does not want to earn much and does not dream big. His or her main plan is to satisfy the norms of the communist society and to help achieve communists sooner. Another characteristic feature was one job for life. So you look the best and the most reliable worker when you stay for decades working in one position, so that the state can definitely know it can rely on you. Honestly, in conversation with many grandparents in ex-Soviet countries, many grandchildren do not confess that one of their life aims is to earn money, because earning money or the desire to become rich is, is and definitely was treated negatively in Soviet communist countries. So we can finalize what is the ideal Soviet worker. A person that wants to be ordinary, conduct a predictable ordinary life, does not want any career challenges and, of course, it does not care about money. Intelligentsia was treated very negatively and even in books and movies in Soviet Union. It was depicted as a dying layer between the class of workers and the class of uh, uh, peasants. By the way, we have a separate Soviet myth debunked on collective farms and the difficult life of peasants back in the USSR. And intelligentsia was mocked for their gentle manners, exquisite taste and sometimes lack of physical abilities for performing difficult tasks. And it goes without saying that salaries in the sector of intelligentsia professions were always lower than the ones for peasants and workers. Real career was very much and closely associated with political party, of course, communist party. And you could not start achieving anything without successful members in, in it. Also, everything was extremely centralized in Soviet Union. Moscow on the top and all the decisions, all the top decisions are made there. Then Russian cities, then capitals of other republics and only then regions of that republics. So, the idea that all Soviet republics are equal, of course, was total nonsense. It was always about russification and occupation and using of opportunities and resources of the countries that were temporarily occupied by the USSR. To be successful in any field, you had to pass and satisfy very many different stages. For example, first of all, you had to be liked by your local village communist committee. Then your case could have been passed to the regional committee, then to the Republican committee, then to the Moscow committee, and so on and so forth. Though so this career journey could take you decades, and many good people were filtered on the road. Another different side of this story was that sometimes you were sent to different corners of the Soviet Union and this decision of your bosses at work were unnegotiable. This forced mobility led to the exchange of people all over Soviet Union and of course it was a planned policy. For example, people from Ukraine were sent to the Far East and people from Kazakhstan were sent to the West of Ukraine. Once again with the idea to create Homo Sovieticus. 
But in reality, it was more about Russification and destruction of cultural identities. Why? Because these trips and decisions were not choices of people who were forced to travel simply to forget their native land and to try to survive in a different, totally different client climate, totally different environment, thus becoming more and more Russified, as Russian was the language of lingua franca and Russian traditions dominated all over Soviet parts. I am personally convinced that Soviet Union is the mother or the father of corruption. If you wanted to get any position, you had to be ready to satisfy the system, and the system was not transparent and had lots of hidden rules. Actually, I believe that corruption is always a result of the system work, and Soviet communist system was always closed and had lots of dark corners. Also, it was very common for workers in the Soviet Union before making any serious decision to consult people from above. And very soon this tradition became national in Russia. No private property and no private business. And we all know how differently it feels when the things you do, uh, the things you work with are your own, not communal. But private business was forbidden in the USSR or any private initiative was very quickly nationalized. Actually, in Russian vocabulary there is a sad expression that can demonstrate a lot. An initiative is always punished. An initiative was always punished in the USSR, it is still punished in Putin's Russia. And as a result, the typical vision of an ideal person is the one that does not dream big and does not want much. One of my subscribers left a comment that I want to quote now. In Russia, people know that you can get wealth only from taking it somewhere or from someone, not by creating it. That is so very true. And that is the key to all Russian scenes. Russian politicians, oligarchs and even middle-sized businessmen believe they can get richer by looting and stealing something either inside Russia or outside as now in Ukraine. Very few talented and creative people left in Russia realize they are not going to organize any business or any initiative. Why? Because once again it will be taken from them. Not by other competitors, but by more violent, stronger people who have connections in the parliament, for example. And it is a true tragedy. Indeed. It is a true tragedy when the largest country in the world can live only on parasiting others. Creativity and dream are now dead in Russia. My name is Anna and my ambition is to have at least 50,000 subscribers of my channel by the end of this month. Why? Because I believe the world needs to know more about Ukraine and more Soviet myths must be debunked as they fuel modern Russian crimes. <laughs>